Sean Diddy Combs' legal issues don't seem to be going away anytime soon as he faces yet another lawsuit accusing him of sexual abuse. But this lawsuit is coming from one of his former collaborators and former artists signed to his Bad Boy Records label. This week, former Danity Kane member Don Richards sued Diddy, accusing him of inhumane treatment and sexual assault. The suit adds another number to the growing amount of sexual misconduct lawsuits the hip hop mogul already faces. This time, it's Don Richard. Don Richard was previously a contestant on season three of Diddy's hit MTV show, Making the Band. According to court documents, during her time on the show, she witnessed different instances of verbal abuse by the hit maker. She claims Diddy referred to the contestants as fat, ugly, hoes, and used other harsh language. And once she was selected to be a part of the band that would eventually become Danity Kane, she alleges Diddy's contempt for women was rapidly apparent. She says the five-member all-girl group was regularly subjected to Diddy's harsh language, and he made several comments about their physical appearance. She names one example as Diddy referred to Richard as too skinny, and she needed to do something about this, referring to her face. During her time in his orbit, she claims to have witnessed Diddy's alleged true colors firsthand. According to the suit around 2005, Richard claims she saw Diddy abuse his former partner and the mother of his three children, Kim Porter. She says she witnessed Porter in tears leaving a music studio with bruises all over her face, including a lacerated lip. Richard said she realized then that Diddy was capable of committing acts of violence against women, and she feared Diddy could one day physically harm her as well. While signed with Diddy, she claims he forced her to work for 48 hours straight, and as a result of the overwork, she lost a substantial amount of weight, became dehydrated, and even developed rashes. According to the suit, Richard believes she was caught in Diddy's alleged web as he promised to advance her singing career if she caved into his demands. She says Diddy deprived her and her Danity Kane band members of basic needs like adequate food and sleep. When asked if she could get meals, Diddy refused and chastised them with comments like, you don't want this, or y'all are not hungry enough, and I'm paying you to work. She says Diddy demanded they record and rehearse for 36 to 48 hours without breaks. According to the suit, Richard lost a significant amount of weight, weighing in at about 100 pounds under the extreme conditions, which at the time she thought was a standard requirement to be in the group. The suit went on to state Diddy continued to assert his power and dominance, and even insisted on holding meetings while dressed only in his underwear. She says in one instance, while at his Miami home, Diddy emailed Richard directing her to meet him in the living room. She said when she arrived, he was only wearing his underwear, and when she asked him to put clothes on, the mogul refused and said, this is my effing house. Richard claims the meeting lasted around an hour, all while Diddy was in his underwear, leaving her feeling violated and embarrassed. By 2009, Danity Kane broke up, but Richard continued to work with Diddy, later forming a new group called Diddy Dirty Money. She says on the first day of recording under the new group, she and her bandmate Kalina Harper waited in the kitchen where Diddy's then-girlfriend Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, was frying eggs for him. According to the suit, she was initially introduced to Cassie around 2006, when she was first signed to Diddy's label. She claims even then Diddy appeared to be fixated on Cassie, but in a predatory way. Years later, she claims to have witnessed more of the dark and true colors behind the mask. During the time Cassie was making eggs for him, Richard claims she saw Diddy high on drugs go into the kitchen and approach Cassie and scream, I've been asking you for my, I can't stand you. You never do it right. She says Diddy pushed Cassie against the wall and choked her, then picked up the scalding hot pan of eggs and threw it at her, causing her to fall to the ground in a fetal position. While cursing and screaming, Diddy then allegedly dragged Cassie up the stairs. Richard says she was frozen in shock and terror, hearing glass shattering, crashing, and banging noises when Diddy dragged Cassie up the stairs. While she wanted to interfere, she was let out of the home. The following day, Richard says she received a call demanding she return to Diddy's home to continue recording. But when Diddy brought her and her bandmate into the recording room, he locked the door, dimmed the lights, and gave each of them flowers. According to the suit, Diddy went on at length saying, quote, this is normal. This is just a lover's argument where no one was hurt. This is what love is. I'm giving you an opportunity. If you want to make it, you'll shut your mouth. If you say anything, there will be consequences. He also threatened her with a warning saying people end up missing. Around November of 2009, after the Soul Train Awards, Diddy flew Don Richard and Kalina Harper to his New York home for an after party. 
She claims at the party there were several celebrities there and copious amounts of illegal drugs. But also dozens of young women and girls, some of which appeared to be underage, be transported to the party. Richard says the women there were wearing little to no clothing and were given drugs and alcohol, and many of them appear to be lethargic or passed out while Diddy and his guests perform sexual acts on them. She says Diddy repeatedly said things like, this is a buffet, enjoy yourselves, this is what we do, this is how we party. Richard says she begged Diddy's personal assistant, Capricorn Clark, to allow her to leave, but Clark told her to wait so she could orchestrate her departure, leaving Richard feeling trapped against her will. According to the suit, that was one of many instances of Diddy's alleged drug-fueled parties, where he and his guests would allegedly sexually violate women who were under the influence. The suit would go on to describe more instances of Diddy physically abusing his then-girlfriend, Cassie. In the fall of 2009, while preparing for a festival in New York, she allegedly witnessed Diddy grab Cassie by the neck, pulling her out of the van onto the grass, pinning her head down, choking her while yelling, you're going to get effed up today. She says that incident took place in the backstage area just outside the festival and that it was entirely visible to passerbys. In another instance in 2010, Diddy allegedly punched Cassie in the face in the bathroom of a party in L.A. And when Cassie tried to stand up to Diddy or even voice her opinion, he would hit her or wrap his hands around her throat and choke her. She claims she and Dirty Money bandmate Kalina Harper tried to get Cassie to leave Diddy. But when he found out about their conversation, the mogul threatened her, allegedly telling them, y'all don't get in my relationship and went on to say, don't tell my what she needs to be doing. Just make money and shut the F up. I in artists. I shelve careers. You could be missing. You want to die today. According to the suit, around 2010, Bad Boy Entertainment entered an agreement with Interscope Records, and their CEO, Jimmy Iovine, had clear knowledge that Combs was abusive and dangerous around women, after Diddy allegedly punched Cassie in the stomach during a dinner where he was present. In addition to the abuse she witnessed, she says Diddy's treatment toward her only got worse. She claims Diddy once barged into her dressing room while she was naked and inappropriately touched her breast and butt. She says in another instance, the producer locked her in a car with heavy tinted windows for two hours as she screamed for help, even calling her dad to help her. She claims her dad traveled from Baltimore to New York to free his daughter and to confront Diddy, threatening to even go to the police. But according to Richard, Diddy told him, think about your daughter and think about your daughter's career. According to the suit, Richard suffered and continues to suffer loss of income, wages, benefits, royalties, and other compensation. She also suffered from emotional pain, PTSD, anxiety, insomnia, and is asking for compensatory and punitive damages, as well as attorney's fees and costs. I'm now joined by a great guest to break this down further, and that's attorney Richard Schoensee. Now, Rich, thanks for being here. Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, is making headlines once again after being sued by a member of a group he used to manage, and that's singer Don Richard. She's accusing him of sexual assault and inhumane treatment. Does this lawsuit come as a shock to you at all? No, it doesn't come as a shock to me at all, because I think what you're seeing is you know, a continuing stream now of legal proceedings against Combs. And this happens sometimes when there's a powerful individual who nobody has gone after. And once that seal is kind of broken, you can see other people. It's not, it sort of reminds me of what happened uh, to Bill Cosby. You know, eventually there was a whole line of people who had claims about his conduct And that seems to be what we're seeing here, that maybe there were people who wouldn't have come public, who wouldn't have brought a lawsuit, and that that door has been opened. And Don Richard says, while a part of the group Danity Kane, she was subjected to verbal abuse, claiming Diddy called the girls fat and ugly. Going as or talking about a pattern, what does that say to you as far as a pattern goes of his behavior towards his artists? Because this was also previously echoed by another member of Danity Kane, Aubrey O'Day, who has been outspoken about Diddy's treatment of the group. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I mean, that kind of treatment is reprehensible. Uh, maybe even actionable in a technical legal sense if you are uh, demeaning members uh, of the people who work for you because of their weight, because of their gender. It's a little bit different in the entertainment industry, but I don't think you would have this kind of lawsuit on those allegations alone, right? We have other way more 
uh, provocative allegations about physical altercation, violence, threats of violence. That's what's really driving this lawsuit. And it's interesting, too, because Don Richard was a prominent collaborator with Diddy. What are your thoughts about that in terms of how far her credibility goes, where she has worked with him since Dan, or she previously worked with him in Danity Kane, then went off um, and collaborated with him some more. But in terms of what she saw during those time periods, what are your thoughts about that um, and how her credibility, how far her credibility can go? It's a matter of credibility, I guess, uh, potentially, but it's also a defense strategy. You know, I can see the defense here saying that whatever she's talking about either was consensual or she played an active role in or she benefited from. She was willing to go along with it back when this was an ongoing enterprise and she was benefiting financially and she's, you know, changing her stance on it now at this late date. Uh, And I'm sure her story is going to be, no, this was always horrible treatment of me. And I'm finally speaking out about it. And this lawsuit's also interesting in that Don Richard says she witnessed Diddy physically abuse his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. She says she witnessed him throwing Cassie against the wall, choking her, dragging her up a flight of stairs, throwing a hot pan of eggs at her, which is just horrific. What are your thoughts? And do you think these claims can or will be held against him in terms of the reported federal investigation into him? Well, I'm, you know, it's, I don't know what's going on in the federal investigation. Obviously, we don't know what the investigators have investigated or found. They're certainly going to read this. I was pretty clear that they had read the Cassie lawsuit back when that was filed. I think that might have had a lot to do with what happened with the federal investigation and why we eventually saw charges. The fact that that initial matter went to litigation before it was settled. So, There's a question here, though, you know, this plaintiff saying she saw him commit misconduct against others, that's not actually her claim. Her claim has to be based on misconduct of her, not what she witnessed. So there could be a fight as to whether those allegations are even relevant to the claims that are directly presented in this case. But I think that fight's a long way off. In terms of when this lawsuit maybe have come to fruition, when do you think that it was that Don Richard had that turning point and went to a lawyer with these claims? There is a lengthy list of defendants. She has, seems to me, like 20 defendants. Uh, it's a 55-page complaint. It alleges 20 causes of action, all of which is to say it wasn't written overnight. Um, it is thought out and detailed It's brought by Lisa Bloom, who is a prominent lawyer for this kind of lawsuit. So these people are serious. Uh, I don't know how long it was in the works. There's really no way to tell just from looking at it. But it wasn't a matter of days. It had to be a matter of weeks or months. And again, I'm sure that the plaintiff here was, I don't want to say motivated, but at least informed by Cassie's lawsuit and by the prosecution, uh, perhaps paving the way for her to bring a lawsuit with her claims. So I don't know which one came first, except I know which ones were filed first, and this one is filed now. And Diddy has denied all the claims against him as these lawsuits seemingly continue to mount against him. But while he's denied the allegations, we all saw the hotel surveillance video of him brutally beating Cassie. Do you expect another statement of denial? Maybe or maybe not. I mean, he might make a statement of denial. He might just choose not to comment on this. Uh, We did. I did see that video as as I think we all did. And it's horrifying and reprehensible and indefensible, just what you watch in that video. Be interesting to see if there's any kind of video or audio or written evidence in this particular case, which could obviously make it a lot more powerful. But it's a different kind of relationship. He doesn't have the same kind of relationship with John Richard that he had with Cassie. So it's a little bit of a different situation. I don't know if he's going to feel compelled to make a public statement about it. Also, because he's got these criminal matters against him, 
he probably doesn't want to make very many statements at all. And do you see Diddy settling this lawsuit by chance in the way that he may have or the way that he did with Cassie's lawsuit, which is the only one he settled so far? And if so, do you think that that could happen anytime soon? Well, it's interesting that the Cassie lawsuit really blew me away because if I remember correctly, that was filed and settled the next day. And what I said at the time is I don't understand how that happened. Usually with lawsuits like this, you send a draft to the defendants and you say, let's settle this or we're going to file the attached lawsuit, which is what I would have assumed Cassie did. And then the defendant One of the reasons to settle is not to have those allegations become public. So I was really surprised in the Cassie lawsuit that he let the allegations become public and then went ahead and settled it the next day. That timing was very odd to me. Um, Could he settle with Dawn Richards? Sure. There's no reason he couldn't offer her some amount of money and she might take it or not take it. Uh, At some point, though, if these lawsuits are going to keep coming, he can't write a check every time they come, especially if he's offering denials. So he's got to think through that overall strategy now. He doesn't have the option of settling these things before they become public, right? The, the, The horse has left the barn on this becoming public. It is now all out there. We've heard the allegations. So the value of settling diminishes a little bit, and that becomes part of the consideration, too. And Diddy was a man whose name held a lot of power. While these are just allegations right now, do you see Diddy taking any accountability at this point? Can he take accountability at this point? I I don't know. You know, these allegations um, from these women, and and I gather others, are of really violent, reprehensible conduct. And I don't know if he, at this point, can just offer, you know, I apologize and I'm going to go work on myself and be a better human being. I don't actually think that's going to cut it anymore. Um, I don't think I'm going to pay them money and settle the suits and, you know, apologize and be a better human being. I don't know if that's going to cut it now. He, he may be backed into a corner where he has to litigate some of these cases uh, and defend himself. And what does litigating one of these cases even look like with so many lawsuits against you? Yeah. So, you know, if I just took this lawsuit alone that I just summarized, you know, 20 causes of action and 20 defendants or whatever it is, um, that is a lengthy, that is a multi-year, you're looking at two or three years of litigation. There may be a motion to dismiss some or all of the causes of action. That kind of motion practice will eat up uh, a period of months. After that, whatever's left of the case will go to discovery. Given the number of parties mentioned here and non-parties that are mentioned, there would be numerous depositions Uh, There would be document production. There would be third-party document production. All of that discovery would take more than a year. Then there would be more motions. So this kind of lawsuit in federal court in the Southern District of New York, which for my money is the best trial court in the world, um, is going to take several years to sort out and be really expensive for everybody involved. And a lot of these lawsuits also have been brought on outside of the statute of limitations, but with a lot of these lawsuits kind of echoing one another in terms of drugging, sexually assaulting, rape, sexual harassment, all of these different allegations, is there any chance that there is justice for the alleged victims? Well, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I hear you about the statute of limitations, but I think some of these claims are brought under some of that litigation that opened the window on the statute of limitations. So the claims may be, uh, may be able to survive on that basis. I haven't analyzed what all of these claims are and if they fit under that window or not, but I do note that there is a window still for some of the stuff that's alleged here. So it could possibly go. Um, can the victim get 
vindication. It depends what the victim wants. Uh, presumably what the victim here wants is money because that's what they're suing for. They're suing for compensatory damages. They're suing for punitive damages. And the lawyers who brought this lawsuit are in the business of getting money damage awards. I always assume with a plaintiff like this, there's also a sense of wanting vindication in in the public, of wanting you know to win and to have it acknowledged publicly the wrongdoing that was done by the defendant and how you were affected. And that too affects whether or not you settle the case. From the plaintiff's point of view, maybe the plaintiff doesn't want a quiet settlement where she's given a bag of money and she goes away. Maybe she wants something more than that. So I can't speak to what vindication would be would look like for Dawn Richard because I don't know her. She's not my client. Only she and her lawyer really know what that would be. And in your opinion, do you ever see a point where Diddy could actually land behind bars at this point? I I think that's I think that's a possibility. I mean, I I haven't followed the details of that prosecution. But there were allegations out there that could lead to that. Um, so I, I think that is a live possibility. Yeah. All right. Well, Rich Schoenstein, thank you again. I really appreciate your time today. Before we sign you off, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. Good to see you, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me on. Talk to you soon, I hope. And Diddy's attorney, Erica Wolf, released a statement in response to the lawsuit. She wrote in part, quote, Mr. Combs is shocked and disappointed by this lawsuit. In an attempt to rewrite history, Don Richard has now manufactured a series of false claims, all in hopes of trying to get a payday. It's unfortunate that Miss Richard has cast their 20-year friendship aside to try and get money from him, but Mr. Combs is confidently standing on truth and looks forward to proving that in court. Reporting for Law & Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.